and she tried to break up with him, because obviously. He wasn't having it though, and he threatened her until she backed down and agreed to keep going out with him. On March 24th, Eno told a friend that she was afraid for her life, and on the 30th she wrote a will before trying a second time to break up with Komatsu. This time he threatened her family, including insinuating that he would physically harm her younger brother, who was just in elementary school. And again, she gave up and agreed to keep seeing him. She was worried that he was connected to bad people because he had two Mercedeses, carried thousands of dollars in the trunk of his car, which sounds like a terrible idea. And once, when he was in a car accident, many Yakuza-looking gang-type people came to visit him in the hospital. After Eno kept refusing to take Komatsu and tried to end the relationship, he threatened her, saying if she didn't return all the money he spent on her, he would force her to work in a sex shop and ruin her family. He contacted a credit bureau to investigate Eno's father's company as well. And when Eno started dating another man, he threatened the man by saying, quote, If you get close to Shiori, I will sue you. For what exactly? He also told Eno his plan if she continued to stay away from him, saying, quote, If you still want to break up, you'll be mentally hunted down and punished. I will ruin your father and destroy your family. Don't think of me as an ordinary man. I won't forgive the woman who betrays me. I can use my personal connections and all my fortune to crush you. I don't need to do it myself. There are many people who I can control with money. What a gem. A little less than a month later, on June 14th, Ino asked Komatsu to a cafe where she told him that she was 110% absolutely definitely done seeing him. Later that day, Komatsu, his brother Takeshi, and another friend of theirs went to the Ino family home and threatened both Ino and her mom, telling them a made-up story about how Ino was liable from some made-up embezzlements that Komatsu had committed. At some point, Ino's father came home from work, and the three guys started in on him, too. They told her father that Komatsu had embezzled money from his company and given it to Ino, and that he wanted the money back. But Shiori's father demanded proof and requested them to call the police, so the matter could be settled honestly. The father, uh, basically ended up telling them to kick rocks, <laughs> to get the out and take the expensive presents they'd forced on Ino with them. The guys ended up leaving, saying that they'd remember this. Can you be any more cliche, honestly? But Komatsu specifically said that he did not want the presents back. So what those three guys didn't know is that Ino had made an audio recording of the entire confrontation, and she went directly to the Saitama Prefectural Police at the Ageo station the next day. One younger officer was outraged at hearing her story, but the others, who actually were in charge of Eno's case, unfortunate, unfortunately, told her that she had no case and sent her back home. That same day, the Eno family got about 20 silent calls before getting one from a guy calling himself Tanaka and demanding she return the gifts. They'd keep getting barrage silent calls like that every day until October 26th. A couple days after her first visit to the police on June 16th, Ino went back again with her parents this time, because I guess the first time she went by herself, and the police again refused to do anything to help her, saying that it was her fault for breaking up with a guy who was in love with her after accepting expensive gifts. And I have some quotes from them, from them in Japanese, such as, Kore wa jiken ni naranai. Kore wa jiken ni wa naranai which is, this This can't be a case, like this isn't enough to become a case. And, presento moratte iru n takara, which is, but you got presents, didn't you? And then, kore wa, I have to look this up, hold on a sec. It's one of those things where it's too kanji that I know, but I don't know how to pronounce them together the way that they are. Danjo. Kore wa danjo no mondai, no mondai takara tachi ire nai desu yo. Tachi ire nai desu yo. Yeah, and that's basically, this is a couple problem and we can't trespass into it. Like, 
we can. Uh, they're basically saying that it's a domestic issue and they won't get involved. The police suggested that Eno go to a free legal clinic run by the Chamber of Commerce, but after a 15-minute consultation with a lawyer, he also dismissed the family's concerns, saying, but she had a lot of things bought for her, right? Same old shit. The next day, Eno got a call from Komatsu demanding that she get back together with him, and she refused and told him that she'd been to the police, which obviously pissed him off, and he ended up hanging up on her. On June 21st, Eno sent everything Komatsu had forced on her to his house by a courier. The next day, Takeshi, the brother, approached 33-year-old Yoshifumi Kubota, who used to be a manager at one of their massage parlors, on behalf of Komatsu and offered him 50 offered him 20 million yen, which is $144,200, to kill Ino. Kubota agreed, and he recruited two acquaintances to help him, Akira Kawakami and Yoshitaka Ito. On July 5th, Komatsu left Saitama Prefecture to go to Naha, Okinawa, to give himself an alibi for Ino's murder. For the next four months, Ino and her family were harassed and threatened more and more, which included having hundreds of posters and letters slandering Ino and her father passed out through the neighborhood and at her father's office. The posters had Ino's face on them and called her a gold digger, a slut, a prostitute, and had her personal information. 340 of them were distributed throughout the neighborhood and 790 were at her father's office. In response, the family went to the police multiple times with the letters, pictures of license plates, and other evidence, and yet the police still refused to do anything, saying things like, Oh, they used some nice paper for this, for the poster, I guess, which in Japanese is, Ikami o tsukatemasne, which, like, who cares? Who cares if they're on nice paper? What does that even mean? And then, Musume san no shiken ga te karai desu. In dewa. Okay, I'm gonna say that again. Musume san no shiken ga owatte kara de i no dewa. Which means, like, how about you wait until your daughter's exam is over? I don't know what that means. Maybe she had, like, college, college exams or something. Or. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what that means, but. Why would you wait until after an exam was over to file a police report? Like, that doesn't mean, even make sense. That's stupid. So, the parents even went so far as to press libel charges against the people who were distributing these flyers, but the senior precinct police officers actively obstructed that case as well, not wanting to look bad for having an unresolved open case, because it might hurt their standing. While all that was happening, Kubota, Kawakami, and Ito, who'd been given a picture of Ino so they'd know what she looked like, watched her house and the nearby train station to plan for the actual murder itself. In September, a police officer even came by the Ino house to ask the family to withdraw the complaint they'd filed. And so they lied to the family and said that if she withdrew the claim, she could refile a complaint again if something else happened. But according to police procedures, once a complaint is withdrawn, it cannot be refiled for the same offense. So they just flat out lied. Eno and her family refused to drop it though, so the police falsified a report, changing it from an official complaint to just an incident report, which meant that there didn't have to be an official outcome listed. They did that because, again, having an unresolved open case made them look bad to their superiors, and they needed to make it seem like they were doing a good job and solving crimes and all that. Which, like, if they solved the crime, then they could have also looked like that. I just don't understand, honestly. So on October 26th, 1999, Ino left her house on a bike headed for Okigawa Station to go to her afternoon college classes. Ito was watching her from a car nearby her house, and he alerted Kawakami, who drove to the station and dropped Kubota off there. As Ino got off of her bike, Kubota walked right up to her and stabbed her once in the side. She turned around, and Kubota stabbed her again in the heart. People who saw the attack happen rushed to try and help her. 
calling an ambulance. One witness said that the man who stabbed her had a grin on his face as he walked away from her collapsed body. What a dick, honestly. She was taken to Akiel Central General Hospital, but pronounced dead at 12.50 p.m., with the cause of death being listed as shock for massive blood loss. As soon as the Saitama police found out that Ino had been murdered, they started a disinformation campaign against her, making her out to be a promiscuous flirt with taste for expensive brand name goods. And honestly, if she had been so what, does that mean that she deserved to get murdered? Anyway, first the tabloids, then the mainstream media ate it all up and started making up their own stories, including saying that Ino had been an escort. The Komatsu brothers and their accomplices weren't arrested until journalist Kyoshi Shimizu decided to investigate Ino's case himself, and he published a report about it in the magazine Focus, revealing Ino's ordeal with Komatsu, complete with the picture of him, and even evidence that the police had lied and falsified documents. Honestly, what a guy. Finally, on December 19th, 1999, Kubota was arrested, and the next day, Takeshi, Kawakami, and Ito were arrested as well. Almost a month later, on January 16, 2000, eight other people were arrested for helping harass Ino. And a warrant went out for Komatsu, who fled to Sapporo, Hokkaido, to avoid getting arrested, but was tracked there by Shimizu, the journalist. What a guy. On January 27, 2000, Komatsu's body was found in a lake in Teshikaga. He'd committed suicide, which was proven by a note found in his luggage at a hotel that said he'd planned to kill himself soon after he arranged for Eno's murder. What was the point then? Honestly, what was the point in killing her? He was just going to kill himself after. A legislative hearing was convened to look into the way Eno's case had been handled by the Saitama police, who were criticized by the media for dereliction of duty, which honestly is just so ironic that the media had anything to say about it after the shit that they pulled. The head of the police formally apologized to the Eno family, and everyone clapped, and they lived happily ever after, right? It showed, the investigation showed that three officers altered a criminal complaint filed by Eno against her ex-boyfriend into a simple deposition, so they wouldn't have to pursue the case. As a result of the investigation, six officers were disciplined, though most of them just got a 5 to 10 percent monthly salary reduction for a few months. What does that even do? Three senior officers were fired and indicted on, doc on a documents falsification charge for their refusal to process the charges Eno's family had tried to file during Komatsu's harassment campaign. Prosecutors had sought an 18-month prison sentence for all three of the senior policemen who pleaded guilty when their trial began in July. Before the trial, the Saitama police chief had said, quote, if we had listened to Shiori and her parents complain seriously, it would be a pity to think that her daughter would not have been killed. I don't know if that was translated badly, but it sounds like he's saying that if they had listened, she would she would still be alive. During the trial, however, however, the police changed their tune, saying, quote, there was no casual maybe that's supposed to say causal it does say causal, I'm just stupid. Okay. There was no causal relationship between the murder of Shiori and the police's negligence in the investigation. Which is just the dumbest shit ever, honestly. Like, how can you say with a straight face the fact that they refused to investigate the crime and protect Shiori Ino, that that didn't cause her to get killed? Like, it did, obviously. She got killed because those guys weren't stopped. Anyway, two of the senior officers were given 18-month prison sentences, suspended for three years, and the third got a 14-month sentence, also suspended for three years. Um, according to Tomoyasu Kotake, a spokesman for the Urawa District Court, Keiichi Ino, the victim's father, said that the verdict was way too lenient. Obviously. Quote, As a parent, I question whether it was really sufficient, he told the national broadcaster NHK. The court clearly acknowledged that the police failed to pursue this case properly. Another quote of his is, The criminal who killed my daughter, the police who neglected to investigate, and the media that hurt her honor killed her three times. The wounds do not heal over time. On September 7th, 2000, Toshio Katagiri and Hirokazu Furuta, who I guess participated in the harassment campaign, were 
both sentenced to a year and two months in prison each, but they were also given suspended sentences, which I guess means that you don't have to serve the prison time immediately. Like with the cops, they got to wait three years before serving their sentences. I don't know what that does. Like, what's the point of that? Takeshi Komatsu was sentenced to life, which he appealed, but on September 5th, 2006, the Supreme Court upheld his original sentence. Good for them, honestly. Kubota, and Kubota is the one who actually stabbed her. Um, Takashi is the brother who contracted Kubota. Anyway, Kubota was sentenced to 18 years in prison for having been the one to actually stab Ino, and Kawakami and Ito were each given 15 years in prison. According to the prosecution, Kawakami conspired with Takeshi Komatsu and the others to post flyers slandering Ino near her home in July 1999. So that's the, um, conspiracy, I guess, was really the crime he got charged with. Kawakami's lawyers said in their final statement that Kawakami should be charged with injury leading to death, claiming the four conspired to harm Ino, but did not intend to murder her. Because, you know, stabbing is really known for being non-lethal, especially when you do it in someone's chest. No one pays almost $200,000 to hurt someone else, either. Anyway, obviously I didn't buy that shit, but it still pisses me off. Quote, This case had a grave impact on society as a stalker murder, prompting the government to improve legislation, presiding judge Takuichi Kawakami said. Damn, so Kawakami sentenced Kawakami. <laughs> on December 22, 2000, Ino's family sued the Saitama police, and on February 16, 2003, a court district ruled a district court rather ruled that the police would have to pay consolation money to Eno's family, but denied that the police neglect had allowed Eno's murder to happen. The family had demanded a compensation of 110 million yen, which is about $700,000, but the court only sentenced them to pay 5.5 million yen, which is $39,700. Oh yeah, okay. While the court denied the police's mismanagement of the situation, Attributed to Shiori's murder, they still ruled that um, they would get that consolation money, and the family appealed, but on August 30th, 2006, the Supreme Court upheld the original sentence. In November 2000, a stalker regulation law went into effect as a result of Eno's murder. In 2001, Shimizu the Journalist received the Editor's Choice Magazine Journalism Award and the National Association of Commercial Broadcasters in Japan Reporting Award for his work on Eno's case. He'd get the same awards again after getting an innocent man cleared of charges in the Asas Ashikaga murder case, which was part of a larger case, the North Kanto serial young girl kidnapping and murder case and pointed out similarities in how the police and prosecutors handled the Ashikaga and Izuka cases compared with Ino's. They were back on their dumb shit, I guess. Anyway, in November 2000, the anti-stalking control law was passed, which aims to outlaw both pursuit and stalking. It clearly states the, st the statute also includes silent phone calls. If a report is filed by a victim, police will take action and issue a warning against the alleged stalker. Additionally, quote, the Public Safety Commission may issue a, pro a pro prohibition order. Seems a little useless, though, since in Eno's case, the police refused to even file the complaint, which is necessary for the protection order, and I doubt a warning would have deterred Komatsu, but it's better than nothing. In the years following the passing of that law, incidents involving stalking decreased, but then they took a massive surge in 2012, and have been going up ever since, and staying high with only a drop, with only a slight drop in the statistics. In 2020, about 20,000 stalking incidents occurred, and these are just the reported ones that the cops actually decided to go through with. The Anti-Stalker Act was revised in January 2017 to include cyber stalking and online harassment with revisions that increased the criminal penalty for stalking from six months to one year and allow prosecution even without a victim filing an official criminal complaint. That was because of a case where an idol was stabbed by an obsessed stalker fan after she also tried to go to police and showed them 400 tweets where he threatened to kill her and they didn't do anything about it and didn't do anything to help her 
same as with Shiori Ino. I actually happen to have a video on that case as well. It's up there if you want to watch it. It's actually two case, two uh, videos. So, uh, Shiori Ino's murder has been made into TV um, features three times. One person, version based on Shimizu's writing was aired on October 28th, 2022. One, another version in which Dina Uchiyama played the role of Ino was aired on December 13th, 2003. A third version was aired on September 26, 2012 as part of the variety documentary The World's Astonishing News. In Japanese, that title is Sa uh, Sekai Gyoten News in an episode titled The Okegawa Okegawa Stalker Incident Why Was a Female University Student Killed? Which is Okegawa Stalker Jigen Nase Joshi Daisei Wa Koro Sareta no Ka in this version, the Eno family are portrayed with their real names, while the culprits are portrayed with pseudonyms. For what reason, I have no idea. On May 21st, 2016, an attempted murder by a stalker occurred in Koganai, Tokyo, leading to an amendment of the stalker reg regulation law, which I think is the idol. As a tribute to this incident, um, that network edited the previously aired episode featuring the murder of Shiori Eno and aired it again on October 12, 2016. In the edited version, the culprits are no longer identified by name, and the parts that previously featured their pseudonyms have been cut out, redubbed, or blurred. Which I have no idea why. Why are you protecting criminals? What does that matter? Like, I get it when they do that for children, but these were not children. So, that's all I have for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, please subscribe to my channel, leave me a like and a comment. 